Uh, we're going to move on now to our next question. Uh, this one comes from our leaderboard. Tina. Yeah, it does. All week, free speech viewers have been going to free speech on Facebook, clicking through to the audience questions page and looking through the many questions, all of which have been submitted by you at home. This is how it works. People click like on the questions they want to see on the show, and we count up those likes to make this the leaderboard. Here it is published at 2 p.m. this afternoon. There are the questions and there are the number of likes they got. The top question is from James Briggs with over a thousand likes. He asked, should we legalize medicinal cannabis? Okay, so that's the question. Should we legalize medicinal cannabis? Uh, let's start with uh, you, please, Tim. No, no. I can understand the case for those who are in tremendous pain. Um, and there should be some recourse for those people being able to access drugs that could help them to relieve that pain. There's no denying that. But the reality is that turning uh, marijuana into something you can get onto prescription creates a whole new market for it. If you spend any time in California, you see this. You get people going to the doctor and saying, I'm feeling mildly down. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Can I have a prescription for some cannabis? And they always get it. Now, this doesn't reduce the incidence of people using it. It increases it. But also, it creates a market for new kinds of drugs. If you legalize cannabis in that way, you don't get people off harder things. You simply encourage people to experiment with harder things. I think the message we need to send to people is that drugs uh, destroy lives, but they are also a, a moral choice, which means that you end up becoming part of a criminal system uh, which supports um, child labor, which supports gangsterism in foreign countries, but also is about dropping out of society and dropping out of the system. And I think that's the wrong message to send to people. OK. Uh, yeah, gentlemen up here in the stripy top. I'll go further and say we should legalise all drugs. The, a lot of the problems... <laughs> a lot of the problems that people describe about drugs aren't because of the drugs themselves. It's because they're in the hands of criminals. And the war on drugs has failed. It's caused more harm than the actual drugs themselves. It's the war on drugs that's to blame. Legalise drugs to solve most problems. OK. Uh, Amy. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I completely disagree with your statement. Uh, I really don't think drugs should be legalized. And, you know, I have a, a very personal story about this because my sister was a heroin addict for 12 years, and I've seen firsthand how drugs tear apart families, communities, how they disturb children. I mean, it's, the devastation is massive. And what I think we really need to do is to look more kindly upon addicts and actually get to the root of the issue around addiction, which is often a backdrop of mental health issues, uh, social exclusion, economic exclusion, all sorts of things. So I think we need to approach uh, drugs in a different way. I would come down with the full force of the law on, uh, on drug pushers and dealers, but I think we need to take a much more holistic and kinder approach to people who do have addiction issues. Okay. This message, Rick, Here, yeah. Yeah, coming on Facebook, they didn't want to give their name. Cannabis has helped me live with Crohn's disease since the age of 12. I've tried almost every treatment available. None have come close to what cannabis does during a flare-up. It puts Crohn's into a more controllable state. It's my disease, my daily pain and torment. I should have the choice. Even my doctors have told me off the record not to stop. So, Amy, do you think this person should stop? Well, I think there are other, other medications that can deal with pain. He's tried every single treatment. This is the only thing that works. Well, you know, I have an open mind about certain things, but I don't think that creating a market for uh, legalized cannabis oh, Lord, in yeah. all cases is, is a good idea. And that person is self-medicating, which is never a good thing to do. But yeah, but they, they say their doctors yeah. told them not to stop, and they've tried every single well, treatment. But let's bring uh, Peter Reynolds in now. Uh, Peter, you are uh, the leader of CLEAR. Um, you want cannabis law reform. Absolutely. And Explain why. Uh, and most urgently for medicinal use for people who need it as medicine. Crohn's is an excellent example. The effects of cannabis on Crohn's are absolutely miraculous. There are clinical trials taking place in Israel at the moment on this subject. But what most people don't realize is that 100 years ago, half of all the medicines that you could get in this country contained cannabis for a wide range of conditions. And it's only 80 years ago that we started this completely ridiculous experiment of banning cannabis. And on, on no basis at all, except on the basis of prejudice. And again, it's only 30 years ago that science has begun to explain why cannabis is so effective for such a wide range of conditions. And what we advocate is very simple, and I think inarguable, and that is that if a doctor wants to prescribe cannabis based on his professional judgment, then he should be able to do so. 
And the fact of the matter is that because there's or so she. much... Is it, is it not true that they can? No, they can't. <laughs> they can't. There's, 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 a, there's, a, there's a cannabis medicine called Sativex. Sat Sativex. Okay, which has existed in this country and has been legal in this country for about five or six years. And it's a spray. It's a spray, okay. Uh, but the, the ridiculous thing is we are the only country in the world that has licensed a major pharmaceutical company to grow cannabis for medicine, and yet our government, our home office, tells you there's no medicinal value in cannabis. So what we want is we want doctors to be able to prescribe cannabis. And as I say, science has now begun to explain why cannabis is so effective for such a wide range of conditions. We all have something in our body called the endocannabinoid system. And cannabis modulates this. And the endocannabinoid system controls our gastrointestinal system, Crohn's. It controls our cardiovascular system. Oh, I think maybe we'll, we'll Google this later. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> gentlemen in the yellow. There, there's obviously some clear benefits for medicinal use, but where do you draw the line to ensure that access doesn't become easy for um, recreational purposes and lead to potentially situations like Amy discussed? Well, what, one of the most remarkable things about cannabis is that it's extraordinarily safe. It is, you know, even, even Professor Les Iverson, who's the, government's, the chair of the government's advisory panel, says that cannabis is a safer drug than aspirin and can be used, used well, without any serious... No, that's not, that's Aspirin doesn't give you schizophrenia. Yeah. It doesn't Cannabis have a link doesn't, to mental can, illness. No, no you see, you're, wa you're walking straight into the Daily Mail caricature. <laughs> Cannabis does not give you <laughs> schizophrenia. <laughs> it's not, it's absolutely uh, not. An anybody plan, in this country... No, no, it isn't true. You look at the statistics, anybody in this country is six times more likely to be admitted to hospital for mental and behavioural problems related to alcohol than for cannabis. <laughs> cannabis is... <laughs> Alcohol is a dangerous drug. Just because alcohol is a dangerous drug doesn't mean you should release another drug onto the market because people are using that first drug. We're talking about, we, here tonight, we're talking about, there are very strong arguments for legalising cannabis for adults all around. Very strong arguments. But here tonight, we're talking about medicinal use. And it is outrageous that politicians and civil servants can interfere with a doctor's professional judgement and try and override what a doctor wants to prescribe for his patients. Yeah. Magic. Yes, just, just, we, I think we've got to be, we've got to be very careful because I think there's, uh, there's two extremes to this debate. One is legalise everything. You know, let's go to the corner shop and buy some crack cocaine, why not? <laughs> and, you know, and the other is you know, being very dogmatic in this debate. And I think there is a middle ground, and I agree with something that actually uh, Nick Clegg said when he came back from Colombia on this very subject. And he said that that middle ground is going to be a UN review into this. The government's currently undergoing a review into this. And there is a serious question about looking at cannabis because it isn't statistically, as you've said correctly, it doesn't lead to as much social damage or health damage and consequences of alcohol. It has a medicinal purpose. We, 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 we're talking here very, very specifically, not about legalization, but decriminalization and changing the debate from being one of law and order to health. It's a health question. And, and like any, any other health question, look, if someone's an alcoholic, we don't start saying let's ban alcohol. We say they need rehabilitation. If, on the off chance, someone gets addicted to cannabis, which is less addictive than alcohol, has less social consequences, then they can go to rehab, like everyone else does when they're addicted to alcohol and cigarettes. But actually, it's better for your health than both of those two we, drugs we, we're, put we're talking here okay. very specifically, though, about medicinal use. Yes. Okay. Medicinal now, use. The, 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 right. the evidence yeah. really is overwhelming, OK? I mean, for instance, take... Peter, I'm going to chat to the, the police about this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Alex Marshall, as a police officer, where do you stand? Uh, as we heard earlier, it's the government that make laws and it's for the police to uh, enforce those laws. So the police don't have a role in making the laws. Uh, there's no doubting the harm done to communities from drug dealing and organised crime. Um, but I think it's interesting from a medical point of view, uh, in medicine, uh, the, uh, the established practice is you always test things thoroughly and you have a scientific basis for a treatment that a doctor prescribes. In policing, I'm from the College of Policing, we're doing research in policing issues to make sure that the policing approaches we use, stop and search being an example uh, we heard about earlier, are based on sound evidence, not on judging people by the way they look, but on the evidence of actually what works. So I think you should always look at the evidence in these things, but ultimately the laws are made by government, not by the police. But, mm -hmm. Rick, the a lot of yeah. responses are coming in online. This from someone called Jung Lenin, I think. Uh, cannabis should be legalised, tolerated. Tim needs to leave his elitist fantasy world and visit the Netherlands. Um, <laughs> Where they're reducing access to cannabis. Let's have a look at the power bar, see what people at home think. Should we legalise medicinal cannabis? That's what we've been asking the online audience. 66% free speech, yes. Oh, hippies. Interesting. Uh, yeah, gentlemen at the back here. 
Well, I want to start off by saying that I think cannabis is miraculous because I read a story about a young girl and uh, one million dollars worth of diagnostics in America wasn't able to diagnose her condition. And yet a few drops of marijuana oil, uh, the dissolved in the oil, managed to cure a, a number of something around 100 seizures a month to having only three. And they were all in her sleep. And I want to point out actually a society between alcohol and weed and I want to address Tim on this one because he said um, if it was about if it was medicinal you could just go to a doctor and be like oh I'm in pain uh, I need a little bit of drug well if what about alcohol you don't yeah. even have to go to lie to your doctor you can just go to the shop and buy it and you can drink as much as you want and it kills people weed yeah. has never killed anybody yeah, yeah. Tim? alcohol is bad People abuse it and it kills people. So let's ban it. That is not an argument. That is let's not an argument. <laughs> that is not an argument for legalizing a different kind of drug. Also, alcohol is part of our society. If we did try and restrict it or ban it, if we did try to restrict it or ban it, that would have extraordinary societal effects, as they saw in the 1920s us. in America. Likewise, if we try to legalize drugs, it'll have extraordinary societal effects because we have not traditionally and culturally no, been used them. If you release these argument. things into society, it'll have a massive, massive effect Absolute that we cannot rubbish. predict. We okay, we, we what, one, at, one at a time, one at a time, Louisa. I think another just edge, I'm all for legalizing cannabis for medicinal purposes, not for recreational purposes. Um, but I think there's another side to this argument, actually, where the, if you have a problem like Crohn's, you can just you can just grow the weed yourself and actually from a corrupt government point of view think about how much money our government makes from pharmaceutical companies and how much um, of a vested interest our government has in pharmaceutical companies and when you do legalize something like weed for medicinal purposes it you go into a whole nother shady area of gray where actually people can self-prescribe and can treat themselves and where the government then would lose out on a huge amount of money um, from prescribing, le you know, legal drugs. Okay. Uh, yes, Lady in the Red. Um, what Tim earlier said about um, alcohol being part of our society, that's only because of its long-standing history. If yeah. it was discovered today, would we be so accepting of the fact that it causes lung cancer and, like, alcohol has such long effects in society? It's only because of its history yeah. and how long it's been around. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, that's true. true. That's it. I don't, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not logically arguing against that. If we discovered alcohol today and it never existed before, I would say it should be illegal. No! We've got some case studies in the States where they have experimented with the legalization of marijuana or cannabis. And what they've discovered is that um, generally in these, you know, this isn't necessarily going to be the case going forward, but at the moment as it stands, there hasn't been a mass surge of people getting addicted to it. They've saved a lot of money by taxing, and this is to Louisa, Louisa's point actually, they started taxing uh, the trade in cannabis and they raised a lot of money out of this because, surprisingly, Tim, lots of people are on weed, whether in Britain or in America. And then finally, the gangsters, the, the gangs, the organized crime element, uh, they basically deprive them of a lot of money as well. I think it makes economic sense, it makes social sense. I, for one, am, I'm standing for Parliament answering the police point here standing for Parliament in Hampstead and Kilburn, I will campaign on the legalisation of medicinal cannabis, and that's uh, something I've decided a long time ago, yeah. even before this debate. Uh, yeah, lady in the green jacket. Um, does, does that mean that this is all a business to the government? Because I thought our debate was on the medic medicinal side of it. You just mentioned that um, they, they tax it. So does that mean that we are looking at the economic benefits over the benefits of the people? Because I think that's I think, what our laws should be on. I, I, think, I think that it comes are, down to a lot about, yeah. about the government. And I think people don't realise how much influence the government does have and how much money is made <clears throat> from alcohol, cigarettes, and how much money they would lose out on if you allowed cannabis for medicinal use, because people would just self-grow. It's also a valid point, because any taxation on this goes back into the health industry. Um, and so you save, and then you deprive uh, uh, organised crime of lots and lots of their revenues, which is a huge problem when you talk about sort of the, the, the consequences, social consequences and economic costs to society by policing organised crime. And the cost to society, let's, let's be real, you know, drugs generally, uh, when we talk about regulating them, it's a huge industry. And I think that on top of that, if you add that to the health benefits, uh, this poor soul that wrote in anonymously, who's living in pain, you know, they've, they've, people have to be allowed to decide what to do with their own bodies when it comes to things as innocuous, as innocuous as medicinal, medicinal cannabis is. It's not crack cocaine. Just a bit it is not crack cocaine, that is true. <laughs>
Um, we're going to move on to our next question. You might actually remember.